Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to another video for Kubernetes for Testers course. And in this I'll be talking about understanding Kubernetes parts. Kubernetes parts. Parts are the simplest unit in Kubernetes object model that you create or deploy. So a part encapsulates an application container, storage resources, a unique IP address, and an option that governs how the containers should run. A pod represent a unit of deployment, a single instance of an application in Kubernetes which might consist of either a single container or a small number of containers that are tightly coupled and that share resources. So as you can see in this diagram, a pod can have one single container running it. So the container can be a container which is deployed by a container management application such as Docker or Rocket or something like that. So it can be one container or it can have two containers or three containers that are tightly coupled and that share resources. And once again, even though these different containers are running within a same pod, they all share the same IP address. And once again, it is always a good practice that you can have a single pod with single container. So if you feel like there are so many different containers required to be running, then it's always best that you can split them into multiple different parts running them. And parts are atomic, meaning once a part dies or crashes for some reason, new parts will be created instantly without even waiting for a second to give a second chance for crashing parts to recover. In fact, you can create our own part with a simple YAML file though. So as I said, if one part dies, so for instance, this part, if it dies, then it won't give a second chance for the part to come in life. It will either just appear in a second, something like this, or it will just die. So it will appear and will disappear. So basically it's going to be atomic and it's going to be super fast and it's lightning fast to create a part, something like this. So it's going to be like this rather just slowly coming something like this. It's very, very atomic. And if a part dies for some reason, it will be instantly created. So the part creation, as I said, we can do ourselves, but basically we don't do it ourselves though, because we can ask the master to do it for us via our replication controller. So we'll be talking about that in our upcoming videos of this course though. But this is what is the part creation simple way of doing. So all you have to do is just create an YAML file, something like shown here. You can create an API version like v1 and kind as part and there is a metadata which gives the name of the pod. So the name of the pod here is basically hello pod. And then there is a spec which contains the information on the containers that you need to run. So basically, as we saw in the diagram, all these different parts are basically running different containers. So the container image pulling and downloading it and running that into this parts are all taken care by the container management which is nothing but the Docker in our case. So it's going to be taken care of by the Docker though. And you can specify the ports, which the container port is going to be running and it's going to be exposing though. So all these things are going to be taken care of by the container management. And this is how you can create a very, very super simple pod. So let's see this creation of parts in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to my item terminal editor. So now I'm in my Mac machine and then I'm going to open this item terminal window in here and let's make this uh, text just a little bigger. Maybe I will change the color, the solarized light. And then I will also increase the font a little bit so that you can see it very clearly what I'm doing in here. And the first thing we need to do is to start the mini cube. So make sure that your uh, Docker is currently running without any problem, which is cool because most of the time my Docker will not be running and I will ending up with uh, with respinning it. So that's why I'm always asking you to check the Docker running in there. And then we need to write, uh, start the VM driver x, x hive for the mini cube. So I'm just gonna start that x hive and you can see that it is going to start the Kubernetes cluster for me. And once again, this is the mini cube, the same thing that we saw in our installation video of this course. So please go ahead and watch there, like how we did the installation if you have not watched the videos there. So that's where we installed the uh, mini cube. And we also have a cube CTL utility, as you know that. So maybe I can just show you in a new tab in here. And you can see that we have something called a cube CTL. So if I do that, you can see 
you can do a lot of stuff from here so you can create uh, and then you can expose you can run you can set and you can run a container and you can get explain edit and then you can deploy and then you can do a lot of different stuffs using the kubectl command line utility so that's one which we're going to be using and you can see there is some other options something like describe logs attach auth proxy so these are some of the most important things that we'll be using while we try to describe a parse that what is happening and similarly if you want to describe what's the node and what is their ip address what is the internal ip address being exposed and the informations everything you can do using this particular uh, kubectl commands and different kinds of commands available within the kubectl so it seems like the kubernetes cluster is up and running so now i can just do this i can just do mini cube i can see the status you can see that the mini cube is running the cluster is running and the ctl is correctly configured and pointing to mini cube at this particular ip address which is cool so i can also do this mini cube and there is something called as dashboard and if i hit enter and you can see that it is currently going to load the the dashboard for me so i can just copy this and maybe i can go to the uh, Chrome browser and I can paste this over here and you can see that there is a dashboard and you can use this dashboard to see what is happening within uh, your cluster so you can see there are some kind of parts which is running so these are something which I have already deployed in my uh, cluster so there are different kinds of parts running and each parts actually has uh, a selenium node running and you can see their logs and you can do all these different kinds of stuffs from here. So we'll be talking about this dashboard and understanding the dashboard in our upcoming videos of this course. But as of now, you can see that this is how you can see Minikube cluster is currently up and running. So I'm just gonna close this guy and uh, I'm just gonna do a clear. So now we need to create a pod. So basically, as you can see that you can just do something called as kubectl and then you can do a get of pods if you hit enter you can see there are different kinds of parts running uh, in my kubernetes cluster already so if i want to delete these parts i can easily do that as well so i can just do that uh, kubectl and then there is something called as delete and then i can do parts and i can give the name of the parts over here so if i want to delete this part I just copy this i can paste it over here and hit enter and you can see that this part is deleted so now if I do a get parts, you can see it won't be there. So similarly, I can keep on deleting all the parts from here. So if I want to delete the uh, this part, so I can just do that as well. So I can just copy this and I can delete the part using its name, something like this, right? And then you can see get parts. It is currently in terminating stage and the container has been created. And once again, once you delete a part, you can see that it is currently terminating a part at the same time it is also creating a part so this is what is called as the containers self-healing thing and once again as i said the parts are atomic and once it is deleted or once it is destroyed for some reason it will be automatically start to run in next second itself so if you do just do a get part once again you can see there is another part being created here and the selenium node is always maintained as five so this is really really cool this is how the parts power are actually available within this kubernetes cluster itself but today we're not going to discuss how this destroy things are happening and how the atomic things are happening rather we're going to create a part and see how we can deal with part creation so for that i'm just going to create a new yaml file so the first thing i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to create a directory here so mkdir and let's call this as cube demo and then i'm just going to navigate to the cube demo and then i'm just going to open a code dot which is nothing but it's going to open me the visual studio code over here so as you can see there is a visual studio, visual studio code up and running so here i'm going to start creating the yaml file which is nothing but the manifest file which we're going to give to the master so that it's going to create a part for me so for creating a yaml file all you can do is just hit this new file and then you can start creating something like parts dot yaml and hit enter so that it will create a yaml file and you can start working from here 
So basically I like this particular editor which is nothing but the Visual Studio Code. It's really really handy and very useful. So I can just do like increase the font size if I want from here or I can also use some of the IntelliSense things from here. But we'll talk about that later in our videos as of now let it be in here and let's create a very very simple part. So the first thing is I'm just gonna do is like I'm gonna create an API version which is nothing but v1. That's the one which we are gonna use for now. And then we need to give a kind here. So basically the kind is actually part. And then there is a what is called as metadata. So within this metadata, we need to give a name for this particular part. So let me call this as a first part or something like that. So that we can just remember that this is the first part that we have ever created. So we need to do that. And you can see that it is little highlighting the syntax like blue and uh, brown color. Just kind of okay, just kind of neat. And then I'm just going to create a spec here. So the spec is going to be something like the containers that we actually have to create. So the containers are going to be something like I'm going to give a name for the container. So let's call this as name. And I'm going to create any one of the containers which is available on the internet. So if I go over here and let's search for uh, Docker uh, Hub image. So I guess the most smallest one is the Alpine Linux. So I can just search for the Alpine uh, Alpine Linux. You can see it's here and it's very, very lightweight. I know that. And this is the uh, Docker pull of Alpine. So you can do that to get its image. So this is the latest version of Alpine, I guess. So I'm just going to copy this guy and I'm going to come back to my uh, image name here. So I'm just going to call this as Alpine and we need to give uh, the image location which is nothing but the place where this image is sitting. So I'm just going to give that and then I'm just going to give the ports. So you can expose the port if you want or you can also leave the port. So as of now I'm just going to give a port something like container ports and then you can see where this particular port is actually has to be exposed. So let's expose this to 8080 or something like that, or maybe 8081. So I'm just going to save it, right? So this is how we can write a very, very simple manifest file or the YAML file, uh, which we can give it to our Kubernetes master. And now we have to run this particular pod creation. So in order to do that, all we have to do is this. So I'm back to the terminal now and let's do an ls you can see that we have this pod dot yaml file so i can use this cube ctl and there is something called as create and using create there is a dash f command which is nothing but the file that i can choose which is nothing but the par dot yaml file and then if i hit the enter you can see that it is saying that unknown field which is the container ports so you can see that you can actually get the information damn very easily using this particular message and it's also saying that there is an unknown field called container ports actually I have typed it as container ports it should be container port so you can see that it is very very easy I can once again go back in here and now if I run it you can see that the pod has been created so easy it is and now I can again do kubectl get pods you can see that my pods is currently available and you can see that the state is kind of completed so it is not running, but rather it is completed. And now it, I, if I get it again, you can see that there is a crash loop back off, something like that. Seems like there is some problem and it is again trying to create. It is kind of complete now. And you can see it is completed. It's completed once again. But if I want to get the information of what's really happening behind the scene, like why is it completed? Why is it crash loop back off? Something like that. So let me do this. Let me clear it. And then there is something called as describe parts. And here I can specify the name of the part so that it's very easy for me to figure out exactly which part I'm looking for. Our part name is actually first part. So I'm just going to choose that. And you can see once I hit the enter here, the first part, you can see it's giving me the information. So this is the container ID and this is the Alpine Linux. And this is the Docker pullable image. It has pulled and the status is uh, state is like terminated. The reason uh, it says something like completed. And 
it also shows you all the information like type ready state and this is the volume it has been taken and you can see that it has been scheduled pulling created pulled started and there is a back off again don't worry about the back offing yet because it's fine that we have chosen just one image randomly from the docker hub and it is currently not running because I would have to give the exact port number which it has to be exposed but I'm not really doing that and that's the reason we're actually getting it that's fine but you can see that we could able to create a pod much easily from here and now if I want to delete this pod I can just go over here you can just do kubectl and then there is a something called as delete parts and first part you can see it is deleted right now so now if I even get the parts you can see that the first part is kind of in terminating state and now once again it is still in terminating and you can see that the part has been terminated this time right so this is how you can actually do all these kind of part creation and terminating the part and checking the status of the parts and getting all the verbose information using describe using parts in kubernetes so in the next video we'll start understanding how to work with services and deployments once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day